It just does not seem possible that another week has gone by. Our third, together in isolation from our community, and so much that is so important to us. And we know that we face at least another four weeks apart. But I do remain hopeful about our future. On Tuesday, March 31st, we became the first medical school in America to graduate its fourth year class so that our new graduates could join the front lines in caring for those affected by the pandemic. This decision weighed heavily on me as I knew that many of our graduates would accept the responsibility to care for those in need and thus put themselves in positions to confront the virus. In considering this decision, I realized that many of our learners in the Graduate School of Nursing are already at the front lines, caring for patients. Our new medical graduates would join their nursing colleagues and others in our noble professions and put others above themselves. The graduation, especially this year, was a proud moment for our School of Medicine. As I was leaving the ceremony that Dean Flott and I conducted with just the two of us in the cube, I greeted a medical school employee who had helped at many commencements over his years on our campus. This lovely person was silent as I approached, and I noticed tears running down his face. His lip trembled as he told me that he was sad. He told me that our students become like family, and he was sad that they would not receive the usual joy-filled send-off to their careers. We stood there together for a moment, and his motion did not surprise me. But it was so odd not to be able to take his shoulder or hand to support him. As I thought about this moment later in the day, I recognized that many are saddened or disappointed by the cancellation of events that, in normal times, bring people together. But our colleague's incredible insight brought comfort to me as he said, in these days, we need to focus on that which is most important. Though he knew the campus green was silent, he also knew in his heart that those who had stepped forward to graduate so that they could serve those most in need were indeed special. True words have never been spoken. Our medical school received an enormous amount of attention this week because we took action to help those most in need at this time of challenge. Amidst the emotions of our colleague, graduates, and family members, his words affirm to me how special our community has become. I continue to hear from so many about the nurses, doctors, respiratory therapists, mental health workers, support personnel, administrators, and so many others who are on duty in service. I'm encouraged by the principal investigators who have come together virtually and are immersed in collaboration to find a way to challenge the virus and to bring testing and therapeutics to the fore. Many members of the community have stepped forward to offer food or housing for caregivers. Others have made donations of their time or treasure to assist us in this defining moment. In my commencement speech, I told our graduates the following. With time, you will tell your children and grandchildren that on the day you graduated from medical school, you were called into service to care for patients with a contagious disease for which there was no cure. You will go on to regale them with the discoveries that were made and how they are now safe because a vaccine and therapeutics were discovered. I encourage them to tell those tales with equal parts of pride and humility. For our noble profession benefits most when we are humble in our achievements and modest with our accomplishments. As we look to the weeks ahead, ours is a most important role as many among us are called to service or to search for the vaccine and therapeutics about which our students will tell their grandchildren. It is with humility that we accept our charge. 
As you take a moment this week to go for a walk, enjoy a quiet dinner or movie night, or read a story to a child or grandchild, please realize the importance of these special moments. In a way, they're silver linings from behind dark clouds. And please be assured of my gratitude for all that each of you is doing at this most challenging of times.